Hello, I'm here with Matt Price, sound extraordinaire, and we shall be talking about Slammer and the sound behind Slammer. My name is Ted byron Baybert, and I'm the writer-director of Slammer, a British independent feature film sci-fi thriller that was created during the global lockdown. So hi, Matt. Thank you very much for doing this. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. Uh, and to, uh, to kick off, I suppose a good starting question would be the general nature of sound within the industry is why is sound so important? So, yeah, uh, yeah, pretty good first question for sure. So I would say that um, sound is, I mean, the classic thing is that it's 50% of the experience, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but also I think people don't realize that now, even though uh, technology and everything is coming down to make uh, like cameras slightly less expensive, even the super high end ones. I mean, everyone's got one on their phone now these days, all that kind of stuff. Um, sound is still the the kind of best, I would argue the best investment per per pound, dollar, whatever currency. Uh, because when you think about the visual, as soon as you've, I mean, it's not just the camera, right? Then you need a person in front of it, or then you need a VFX, or then you need a, and then there's this whole labyrinth of people that, um, yeah, it turns into a huge pyramid compared to usually a sound crew of like, what, 10, 10 to 30, 40 people, if you're getting to like super high-end um, yeah. stuff. Um, and then generally, even even that is just down to the sheer like time constraints that they have. Uh, so I've been fortunate to like interview quite a lot of people that work on like Oscar winning, um, like massive budget feature films as well. And still their teams are really small, but it's just because they have uh, such tight deadlines. So that's yeah. that's the only way you get more sound people usually. Well, <laughs> because if you want it faster. I have to say, when I've listened to your to your podcast and um, and the work you've done on YouTube, and you're talking about and you're interviewing um, different talented individuals on the subject of sound, uh, the, the, I suppose my my pounds worth is you can often tell immediately within the first five seconds the the quality associated with the film, the independent film, down to how good the sound is. And there are so many very, very talented independent films, but they, they, the sound isn't that good or um, the production value of the sound or the sound design isn't perhaps as ambitious or as impressive as they would have liked it to have been. It's certainly good enough to broadcast, but there's a big difference between, there, there's, very, there's large differences, I would say, between you know, good sound and incredible sound. Yeah, for sure. And I would say as well that um, even with that, for instance, the visual budget being generally more, much more expensive than the sound budget within the sound budget, obviously, then there's two realms where there's music, which is kind of just this whole separate thing composing yeah. everything yeah, else, exactly. which I would say still makes up a large chunk of even the final sound budget. So once we get down to like, tiny, tiny bits, it's, it's almost like, I think a great analogy for it for people that um, I don't know, trying to get their head around it is uh, I like to think of color grading. And I personally have like zero experience of like, how would I talk to a color grader? Like, is it just a preset? Is it like Instagram filter? Like, how, how is it? How is it adding to how is it like, what is it communicating? Um, and yeah, so I think uh, I think a lot of people still have that relationship with sound almost that they they know they need it. Um, but especially for like indie feature films, there's a lot of like, well, I just need to kind of get it done first and then I'll use sound as like a fix for whatever I, what, like trying to like mesh, mesh everything together. Yeah, with Slammer we were incredibly lucky because as an independent feature film, we still had an awful lot of people uh, working on the sound of Slammer um, and <laughs> I mean, they're, you know, obviously, you know, work, almost working backwards, I would argue, um, you very kindly became available to help with block three, which was extra tricky because we were filming that during the harshest part of the, of the lockdown and, and pandemic. Um, then we had uh, Rufus, uh, we've got uh, Freddie, uh, Alistair and Paul. I should probably do title cards of exactly, yeah. you know, uh, 
all all the guys um for i hope i hope i really hope i haven't oh sven on boom for block one and two um and essentially we filmed slammer in three blocks so i i, I over um well two year period uh which seems mental in every way but um yeah and and, and obviously that's not normally what you would do you wouldn't normally have that many people uh trying to help you in any given situation you normally have a, a team and they'd start together and finish together but you know we had to we couldn't do that <laughs> um, um yeah. so a big shout scheduling out. is always tricky scheduling, definitely. yeah oh, hugely and a big shout out to everybody uh on the sound team and then of course we've got um kevin uh kevin brazier and and, and, and wayne for the sound design we've got john uh, and his team in Singapore for for music and other bits of sound design, the big lo long list of thank yous, with a question which is your memory of doing sound uh, for Slammer during lockdown? Uh, yeah, I, I just remember because obviously coming, obviously a very, very like social thing. So there was a few people, obviously you had Jamie, you've had a few people that have been consistent throughout the whole thing. Um, which is very important again from like a visual standpoint sound thankfully is a little bit different because you're essentially it's almost like a focus puller or something the kind of end goal for at least the production side of things is just to get really good sound and then that's pretty much you're like you're only aiming for that there's there's kind of then you're trying to like solve for x as it were so um so yeah i just remember that there was really good momentum just within yeah uh just the crew the cast um and so it's always really good like uh, like you say it takes it takes a long time to make a feature film any feature film even if you have um yeah just everyone just like straight on the page and just cracking on i mean it just makes having a professional experience even though when people say indie they expect like you and your cousin to be like shooting a film or something it's a big thing it's a big thing and, and asking them look can you give your all to you know this this debut and i think yeah and, I think and, and continuity continuity and consistency play play a big role in in films that i mean even any feature film there's always like pickups so there's always so even if you didn't shoot it in three blocks pretty much the, the that's true that's true that's true there's usually like, something yeah. that would be at least two blocks in terms of like well we'll pick up this or other side it goes this way um so it's yeah so yeah. i think it's and, and it's of course really you and good a, a lot of people knew each other so you obviously you yeah you know you've known jamie for for jamie uh, and emmy land i've worked with before and as well, and you've known and yeah it um, just it just made it just knowing everyone's on the same page that's that's yeah. the biggest the biggest thing even when you're starting out it's the yeah just having that kind of gel factor to know that everyone's actually like playing their part it just make it just brings everyone up right as opposed to the the weakest link as it were yeah well i think in many many cases um i was just so happy to finally have cameras rolling yeah uh, and a film about isolation um and i mean we've got medical technology we've got themes of penance retribution politics space i mean there's a lot of sort of high concept stuff in this film yeah crypto yeah. blockchain oh, sorry yep. yeah yeah. cryptocurrency blockchain yep absolutely um uh and 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 again when we were sort of planning this this sort of podcast interview type thing of this is my first my first one i've ever done i mean you you must have done about i mean you must have done hundreds um <laughs> You know, probably on, up to maybe a hundred, yeah. On, on the on the on the on the map on the map price channel, interviewed and been interviewed. You know. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and uh, obviously, in in being a sound recorder, heard lots of interviews and heard and heard. <laughs> it's always handy. So. And heard lots and lots of interviews. Yeah. So for me, it was a lot of, a lot of, in the same way that this is my first time doing something like this. Uh, obviously, Slamo is my debut feature film. Uh, I've been making stuff and and. Um, uh trying to make a feature film uh for about 26 years and so bringing whatever experience i've learned over around 26 years into slammer knowing knowing i think my i think yeah the, the advantage was i just knew people i'm a big believer in knowing people who know 
So for example, if I know somebody, I know categorically that they, they can do the job. And then of course you've got this personal connection of, but then that same person will also know somebody that they can recommend in the same way that you recommended some wonderful people. And I think the film industry is famous for that. You don't have three interviews, have to go through human resources 14 <laughs> yeah. times. You know, you've had a conversation and the next day that person turns up and then they're thrown in, they might read some script pages, they might not, they might be told what's going on or they might have to figure it out for themselves. What are the biggest challenges that you learned early when doing your job? I think because um, quite a lot of it is very technical and it's that kind of like you're just solving for this one problem, which is um, how do you get kind of great dialogue with minimal noise? Essentially, if it, we're just talking about on set um, post-production, again, it's kind of a whole different world of now you have this like every single color in the rainbow. And so which which one do you use to uh, to bring out the best mood? But um, for for production side of things, I'd say the biggest thing of people getting started out is uh is almost just their attitude or just like how they are to be on set i mean you're there you're you're shooting for like long periods of the day you're with the same people day after day you're trying to like you're going through various stages of like there's there may be time pressure there may be resources there may be things that go wrong there's there's all this kind of stuff at play um so i'd say just your attitude and just general uh kind of demeanor just helps massively because again yeah. it's still a very even though you could just be like one man banding, as they say, um, or one woman banding. Um, it's it's still a very like collaborative thing. You still okay. you're still working with the camera people. You're still working with the director. You still you don't don't feel that you're like isolated. Try and um, yeah, be be helpful without kind of. Well, uh, I think you've hit the nail on the head there. I think I think you've genuinely touched on a few things that's really important and stuff that I learned early on as well, which is, you know, part and pro. Part, part, part of the process is bringing your expertise, but it's also you're, you're a team member. You're one of the, like you mentioned earlier about, you know, is this if you're the focus puller or a, a very crucial cog in the wheel. And although with sound, it's, it's that unwritten rule of, it's even more important than one even realizes um, uh, on the one hand, but you are being helpful. So you're, you're, very, you're very, very good at um, how else can I be helpful? Like, yes, I can do sound, but you can also provide assistance and assurance and advice on a multitude of different things under extreme pressures. I mean, one of the things is that we didn't, we started at a relatively decent hour and we had to finish at a reasonably de de decent hour. And every film I ever do, um, I, I would like to, again, respect the timings, you know, People have lives and, you know, although in my head it's, you know, seven days a week for three years, which it has been, <laughs> yeah. not everybody, you know, can possibly feel that way. <laughs> well, that's just locked on those. Uh, <laughs> and, 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 and also, uh, you know, psychologically, you know, the pressure is, is, is quite intense. You know, you're dealing with people who certainly are cast were very experienced in, in many cases, you know, mm -hmm. so they will expect to have certain things presented to them in a particular way, yeah. um, you know, and it's all very well having a, a great script, which, you know, is very proud of, but then some days, sometimes on the day, you just don't, it's just not possible to do yeah. that original idea that you came up with two years ago. Uh, yeah. So you then have to adapt. Yeah, yeah, it's all about the ideas and the execution, but it must've been interesting having three blocks that were, uh i guess kind of planned right because you did it's it's not just like you tried to do it all in one block and then it didn't work you like deliberately went and no so there was so so there was a, the reason why so apart from the fact that with the, the pandemic separating block two yeah. and block three the reason why is down to location so pure and simple we were waiting on um we were waiting on a a, a very crucial location and we we we, we really uh talking about the film specifically there's a company called hansagret hansagret is is our Cyberdyne Systems or Skynet, you know, uh, um, you know our, our company that is, imagine if you married uh, Facebook and Amazon together, yeah. you know, this just, just this, 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 this already powerful company that you soon realize is even more powerful than you first thought. And, and uh, Hans Gret is dealing with everything, including all the medical stuff we talk about in the film. Anyway, um, we had to find a location, which we did, and we needed to secure that location, which luckily, thankfully, so happy we did, which where the audience absolutely believed 
100% that that building, that atrium, that, that place chosen, we would believe as an audience member that would match with the idea of a very large, powerful company. And, and uh, there's too many people to thank, but fundamentally we, we selected Beaufort House and Allgate as our, as our place. Yeah, it's phenomenal. We also, we also could combine the location at Beaufort House with um, the guys at Us & Co, um, thanks to the Breen brothers, who very much, who very kindly provided the Us & Co locations, uh, Tower Hill and, um, and Stratford. So yeah. yeah, so we had to fight. So anyway, so, so block, so in, in summary to, to, to those blocks, well, through the entire process, but certainly block one was filmed in Essex. <laughs> block two was filmed in Greenwich, um, des Greenwich Design. So, um, Greenwich Design in Greenwich, uh, where there's a med prison, there's a, a particular space, and we built our med futuristic medical prison there. So uh, we had block two there, and we had to film when we filmed because Greenwich Design and the other companies were leaving the building. The building was being sold. So we fundamentally, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm slightly going, going off piste now, but it's, it's, it's an interesting story. Uh, had the lock, sorry, had the, had the lockdown, uh, um, which enabled us to uh, review uh, all picture and all sound um, prior to block three. And then block three mm. was then Beaufort House, uh, the Us and Loke co locations I mentioned earlier. Yeah, three, three months of editing to, to, to get to a stage yeah. whereby the film is practically finished. Yes. How is the visual edit complementing your thoughts or your execution on the sound edit? Yeah, that's a really good question. So the sound design, um, the sound, talk is important in any film, but particularly important with Slammer because we are creating a Slammer universe. If you're creating a, a Slammer universe and you've got to design a sound spectrum for any science fiction or future tech, that becomes really important because you've got your, you've got your, your sounds in the real world, let's say, or your, in this case, an alternative reality. And then you've got your sound design that would be sort of in the med prison or what does the med suit sound like, or... Um, it becomes you know, the equivalent of like your lightsaber. Exactly, right? what, exactly. In exactly, every film. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. What is our, we have the same thinking perhaps that was applied to THX, um, ah, yeah. George, George Lucas's uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, debut, where futuristic sounds or text sounds had to be created so that we would buy into what we defined as future tech. You know, yeah. you could argue if you, you could argue that if you are, have a laser gun, we now know intimately what a laser gun what, what a laser gun should yeah. sound like because <laughs> yeah, we even though there's not necessarily been a laser gun, there's now a consistent yeah, but but, but universe actually, of like, laser guns yeah exactly, but but actually we don't have again I can't stress this enough we don't have lightsabers or laser guns in our film, but yeah. we do have <sighs> we do have things that require signature a very definite yeah very definitive signature very definitive definitive sound which yeah. you know kevin and wayne and the guys are working on right now another example would be um if you're creating the world i'm now going to talk about atmosphere so the film takes place over a year so if you're going to say right well this is uh, a particular season the season of spring or autumn we don't have a title card nor did i wish to have any title card <laughs> yeah. that said we are Three now days later. We are yeah. now in autumn. Because to yeah. me, it's like, well, no, there's no there should be no need to label it in that way. You should be able to pick up roughly where we are in, in the world of Slammer time-wise or season-wise, because of the amount of clues with which sound is incredibly important. There'll be there'll be a few visual signifiers as well, but sound is incredibly important. And it's more, more fun. Like you allow the sort of the seasons and the time to wash over you. And you don't therefore have to be too specific. And if and if you miss that sound effect, it doesn't matter. If you miss that, if you miss that um, that that signifier, or that if you miss the visual signifier, there's probably a com a sound signifier that will help tell you, and vice versa. If you hear the sound signifier, um, then you know hopefully the visuals can help and complement. Um, but either way, you, yeah, you, you don't. Have, time is is fluid. Time is very fluid in Slammer, and it should feel like you've been on this roller coaster. Uh, without too many stops along the way it sort of just washes over you so that's yeah. a very sort of long-winded way of saying how how sound was used 
both the sci-fi version and the real world version. And are you doing it, because um, obviously you had a bit of time before with the previous blocks, um, and you, from what I remember, you had you were having rough like placements of where things would be. Obviously now you're fully into the edit. Yeah. Are you doing, how, how is it working logistically with um, your sound team in this film? Because I've seen it done before and I've worked on, on films myself where it's, you don't, you're either giving your, your sound team a full picture lock or you're getting them involved a bit earlier. Or, I mean, some people get them involved, like, even before pre-production. I mean, there's well, a whole, yeah, spectrum, well, I, I guess, I, I, of, like, I how involved definitely. your post-team has been. Yeah, and I, I can definitely ask that question, because I called Kevin Brazier really early on. I mean, he's yeah. a extraordinarily, an extraordinary talent. Uh, and he has been in the game, and his family have been in the game for generations. There is nothing nice. that the Brazier clan do not know. And, 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 and Big Daddy Brazier was the first person I called because I knew how important sound was, how important sound design was, what would have to happen to make this all work. And I called him and bearing in mind, he's worked on other stuff that I've done and taught me so much about sound, his experience, you know, and his, what I've learned from him, I knew what was possible and what absolutely was no way even, you know, I knew what was, well, I knew what was potentially possible if I pushed the envelope a little bit. And I also knew yeah. what just wasn't even like, worth even attempting. And that was really helpful. Yeah. Now, Kevin and, and Mark Manning, uh, CEO of Director's Cut, um, uh, I, I've known them both independently and together for many, many years. So having somebody who is, uh, you know, highly experienced on the post-production side with an incredible team here at Director's Cut, Plus Kevin's team and Kevin and Mark together have worked together for years and, and Kevin's team as well helping, you know, we're in very, very safe hands. By calling Kevin early and discussing the idea with Kevin early, Kevin could come up with some conceptual ideas, which even now today we were using, which may not be the polished finished version, but at least we had something and that in itself would then help dictate the edit. I'll give you an example. Um, if you imagine that the one of the locations requires a particular sound, if you didn't have that sound, like in any way, shape or form, of course, you can download a, a sound effect and use that. But if it's nowhere, nowhere close to what you specifically need, then it's actually distracting. And it's actually it actually perhaps doesn't help because people then go, well, I don't really quite understand what you're going for. However, if you've already got this conceptual sound mm -hmm. um, and you're showing it to lots of people to, for them to understand as well, then it's great to have early. And then, it can, and then, it, then, then that sound can be evolved closer to what you need it to be. Um, but so it's so unbelievably helpful to have, it, to have it early. And at this point, with a few minutes left, I should really shout out to George Clemens, uh, has been on it for years um, and, and he loves Star Wars. In fact, I think he knows everything about Star Wars. So when I talked about a sound effect, for example, and yeah. to give perhaps even uh, Kevin and Wayne an idea of what we need. So having said a number of times, Slammer is nothing like Star Wars. Once again, I'm referencing Star Wars, but the whole film is a miracle in itself because you just don't make you just do not make a film like the way we had to have made it. I mean, there's mm. been huge negatives and positives uh, and, and making the best of what we have resource wise. Um, yeah, yeah. And just getting so much um, incredible experience and technical help and talent associated with, with, with Slammer, the cast, you know, Flora, you know, uh, James, Victoria, Joe, Sam, Clara, you know, and, and, and Alex and, 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 and all of those incredible cast members, you know, or crew or heads of department, um, being on this for so long and, and sticking with me for so long. And uh, yeah, I, I really hope that the film, when it's seen on the big screen, you know, everybody's very proud of it. Yeah, bring on September, right? <laughs> Bring on September, mm. bring on September 2021. That's the, uh, that's the plan, yes.
Um, and thank you very much, Matt. I really appreciate your time to, um, well, on Slammer, but also to mentor me through this type of stuff. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, no worries. No, they're always get, good fun. Has to get done to, to, to get the, the, the story and the myth of Slammer out there. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing it. It's fun only doing one block because then, you, then you're like, oh. Matt, you're a legend. You're an absolute legend, man legend, sound legend. I truly appreciate your time. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Anytime. Look forward to the next one.